Okay, so if we back up a little bit, this is kind of the final little part. We want an if statement to see if it's touching. So I'm going to go into my draw loop, which is this one, and do an if statement. So if bunny is touching coin, then what happens? Well, we're going to call the function set coin because that resets the coin, right? It changes the velocity, which we want to make a random number, by the way, between, uh, let's make it between three and seven so we can switch it up. This is a random number between three and seven. Um, so let's just try this. So now we should be able to touch it with the bunny. There you go, look at that. And touch, and touch. And you can see that it changed. That speed, slow speed, fast speed. Slow speed, faster speed. I don't know if I can get there. Oh, beat me to it. Oh, that's impossible. There we go. Now, what do you notice? We probably want to display that score. So if we look up above, we have a variable score. So if we touch that value, maybe we increase our variable by one. Let's do that. So we can say score gets score plus one. And then what happens if it makes it all the way to the bottom? So see this right here? If it goes all the way to the bottom, we could say score gets score minus two. Let's lose two when you get to the bottom. So let's try it. Here we go. Let's, oops, touch it. Good. Oh, minus two. There we go. We can see it. Touch, touch, touch. Awesome. So that's looking good right now. Now, a couple things that I want to do. I'm going to put this in a function. So I'm going to create my own function down here. And I'm going to create a function that's called move bunny. You're like, why would I do this? Well, this code is kind of driving me nuts, like having to scroll up and down here. I don't, once this code works and I know that my bunny movement is good. Like I'm going to move it out of there. So I'm going to cut that out of there and I'm going to move it down to this function. So I'm going to go all the way down, put it right here, and paste it into move bunny. And now wherever it was, which it was sitting right here in my code, I'm going to call that function that's called move bunny. And I have done nothing different. My code should run the exact same that it did before when it does. I'm moving my arrow keys right now. Side to side, there's left, there's right, stop, left, right, left, right. We're good to go. Okay. But look how clean that makes. Now, let's make another one. Let's do this one, the score detail. So let's call, make a function called draw score. So down here, do draw score. And then what are we going to put in there? We're going to put this stuff. I'm going to cut that from there. I'm going to put it down here. And now we can call draw score. Again, you're still going to see the score up here, but now it just cleans us up. What do these things do? Well, this like checks coin location, right? So we can check coin to see where it's at. So we're going to do a function that's called check coin. And what's it check the coin of? Well, it checks to see if it's off the screen or if it's touching the bunny. So these kind of go into that function. So I'm going to go in here, paste it right there, and then I'm going to call check coin. So now look at your draw loop. It is so much more simplified. I'm going to get rid of some of this white space. Look at this. It is this many lines of code. It's move the bunny, check the coin, draw the score, draw the sprite. And this works just the same as it did before, but we know that those functions work. I don't have to read, I don't have to change those. Like, and I'm not in danger of changing them because I don't really mess with my functions. Once I write my function, if it works the way I want, 
I don't have to mess with it. And the cool thing is, is if I need to change it, I know exactly where it's at. I know where my set coin stuff is. I know where my move bunny function is. I know where my draw score is. So I can go in here and modify if I need to, but really I'm probably not going to need to modify any of those things. And then the final thing I can do um, is on the next activity. It wants me to have two different backgrounds. So right now it's really plain. Um, I've got a white background, but again, I can create two new functions. I'm going to have one that's called a silly or simple background. And then I'm going to have another function that's called silly background. So I'm going to make both of those. And what can your simple background be? Well, uh, I'm going to use this background command. I'm going to take this all the way down here. Um, I'm going to do blue. I'm going to make it like an outdoor scene. So I'm going to do a sky blue. And then I'm going to make a little bit of, well, there's no real grass. So if you notice, why is it streak? Look at that. We've got my coin streak going on. And I'll get my rabbit streak. Look at that rabbit streak, coin streak. That's not right, is it? No, because I'm not drawing the background. I move that, I move that out of my code, but I didn't call a simple background. So this is where I need to have an if statement. If score is less than 10, I'm going to call simple background and if it's not it's called silly background so now it should be sky blue and it should do its thing and because there's nothing in silly background it's not going to do anything at the moment but get the idea here so let's do our silly background. So we're going to make instead of sky blue, we're going to do this RGB value. And for the red, we're going to do a random number between 0 and 255. That's going to be crazy. It's going to change all the different shades of red. So let's try it. Oh, one other thing, so you don't have to sit here and do this like forever. You can go up here and instead of a score of 10, let's do a score of 3. Okay, that way I can get this done quick. 1, 2, here we go. Boom. Oh, there we go. D -d 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 -d. Silly background, changing red a lot as we flicker through there. Now you can do all sorts of things. Um, in that but that's just the simplest way to do it that fulfills the requirements write your functions you could even put this in a function that's called draw background so you can go inside of here do a function draw background and now inside of that function I'm just going to copy and paste this code I'm going to cut that out of here Move it down to this, and now I'm going to draw background here, and that should work the exact same. So here we go. Oh, negative two. I get five now. There's one, two. Uh oh. Come on, make it. Yes. And there it goes. All right. Have a good rest of the day. Enjoy. Make it fun.